Well, hello, tubers. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day down here in southern British Columbia. And I figured since the sun is shining, oh, Sammy, oh, Sammy's complaining about something which I don't understand. What are you complaining about? Get back there. Back in the car. <laughs> I figured since it was so sunny, might as well talk about solar power in winter for RVs. Because. Those of you who have not uh, bought solar or have never winter camped with solar, you're gonna find it's a complete waste of time in most situations. And I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, camping in the northern latitudes in winter, you get a lot less daylight in the winter because of the tilting of the axis of the earth. That's why we have winter in the northern hemisphere while there's summer in the southern hemisphere. Very simple. I'm still amazed at how many people don't understand that. <laughs> and of course, if you ever travel down to the equator, every day is about 12 hours long. Every day. Doesn't matter what month of the year it is. That's the beauty of being in the tropics. But most of us are not in the tropics with our RVs. So we have to deal with the seasonal uh, fluctuation of solar energy. And since I was just trapped in my RV for 11 days in the winter, it was February, there was very little solar power to be had to run my furnace. And as you guys all know, furnaces typically draw eight to 10 amps each hour when you're running the blower. And that's a lot of energy that you are not gonna get from your solar unless you have a massive, massive installation of solar. I have a 160 watt panel the best I got for maybe one hour was 2.1 amps. That's it. You could not rely on it. You could rely on it to charge your cell phone and maybe watch uh, TV for one hour a day. That's it. And even if I would have tripled the amount of solar on my uh, RV, you know, it's like the Billy Preston song. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Yeah, and let's face it. 2.1 amps for an hour, if I tripled that, <laughs> it's still nothing. It's, it, it would be enough to run my blower uh, of my furnace for maybe 50 minutes, you know, just under an hour. Lame. And you're also limited by space on how much solar you can put on your roof. And that's just uh, the way the cookie crumbles. But I will say this, my 160 watt panel is perfect for spring through early fall. I have more than enough power to run everything I need. And let's face it, I'm not running the furnace much or even at all, which makes the whole difference. So don't be fooled by pitch men trying to sell you solar panels online. That It's gonna work wonderfully. I've even camped in Arizona in the winter. Don't get much sun. But here's the kicker where it gets really, really, really useless. In the Pacific Northwest in the winter, a lot of cloud cover. Any coastal area is going to get a lot of cloud cover. That reduces your solar energy available to your panels to nearly nothing. Yeah. If you add other obstructions, like if you're camped inside a valley where the actual mountains restrict how much light you get, that's another problem. Add some trees. Yeah. You get the picture? Unless you have a massive installation or you're only using it to run a TV for an hour and to charge your cell phone, it's gonna be fairly useless, especially at high latitudes. And so you're gonna find there's not enough solar to run everything you need in the winter in your RV, unless you have a massive installation. There's just not enough sun available. That's mother nature. There's nothing you can do about it. Buy a wood stove if you want heat. That's your options, folks. Trust me, I didn't rely on my solar at all trapped for 11 days in the bush. It was pure generator power from fossil fuel. And I was increasing my carbon footprint with my generator. I salute you hydrocarbons. Thank you very much for keeping me safe and warm because without my generator, <laughs> I would have been screwed. So that's my thoughts about solar energy in the RV. You put your comments down below. I'll see you later. Over and out.